now, the greatest radio shows of all time. Suspense. The Shadow Node. Washington calling David Harding, counter spy. Classic radio theater. The Great Gildersleeve. Faber McGee and Molly. Dragnet. Gunsmoke. The Lone Ranger. Now, step back into our time machine with your host, Wyatt Cox. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. So if you were listening on Tuesday, you heard about uh, the cold-blooded professor and how the counter-spies rounded him up. Well, it appears that the prisons weren't able to hold the professor. And you'll hear how the counter-spy, how he escaped and how the counter-spies recaptured him. Counter-spy starring Don McLaughlin Mandel Kramer from uh, 73 years ago, September 1st, 1949. And we thank you for making us part of your Thursday, first day of September. Brand new month, 244th day of the year, 121 days remaining until we get to 20, uh, what is it, 2023. That's where we're going. Uh, Former Vice President Aaron Burr found innocent of treason on this date in 1807. In 1923, a devastating earthquake struck the Japanese cities of Tokyo and Yokohama. 150,000 people killed. More than 2 million left homeless. World War II began on this date in 1939 when Nazi Germany invaded Poland. In 1969, a coup in Libya topped the monarchy of King Idris and brought Muammar Gaddafi to power. A Korean Airlines Boeing 747 shot down by a Soviet fighter on this date in 1983, killing all 269 people aboard. It would be easy to think in terms of vengeance. But that is not a proper answer. We want justice and action to see that this never happens again. Our immediate challenge to this atrocity is to ensure that we make the skies safer and that we seek just compensation for the families of those who were killed. Now, among those killed, Georgia Congressman Larry McDonald, the aircraft en route from Anchorage to Seoul when it flew through Soviet-prohibited airspace around the time of a U.S. aerial reconnaissance mission. Soviet Union denied knowledge of the incident, later admitted shooting it down, claiming the aircraft was on a spy mission. A joint U.S.-French expedition located the wreckage of the Titanic on this date in 1985, 560 miles off the coast of Newfoundland. Chechen terrorists took about 1,200 school children and others hostage in Beslan, Russia in 2004. Commandos would storm the school on the 3rd of September. And in 2017, Russian President Vladimir Putin expelled 755 diplomats in response to U.S. sanctions. Passing away on this date in history, journalist Drew Pearson, the fine singer Ethel Waters, Jerry Reed, eastbound and down, quite a singer and didn't do a bad job as an actor either. Also, songwriter-composer Hal David and actor-singer Dean Jones, all passing away on this date in history. This is the birth date of Don Wilson. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Kenny Baker, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The Sons of the American Legion, squadron number 241 in Philadelphia, gave an officer's dinner a short time ago, and they sent us one of their menus. Well, here's what topped off the meal. Dessert a la Jack Benny. <laughs> yes, sir, you've guessed it. That was Jell-O. Don, an amazing announcer, and he was not bad in uh, uh, doing the radio acting thing either. Don Wilson, born on this date in history. Also born on this date, author Edgar Rice Burroughs, actress Yvonne DiCarlo. You remember her as uh, Lily Munster from the Munsters. Boxer Rocky Marciano, country singer Conway Twitty. Hello, darling. Or was that the right one? I think it was. And uh, pro wrestler Bam Bam Bigelow. Turning 83 years of age today, Lily Tomlin. One ringy dingy. (laughs) Two ringy dingies. A gracious good afternoon. Have I reached the party to whom I am speaking? This is Miss Tomlin of the telephone company. Have Have I reached a Mr. Aristotle Onassis? Miss... Good. Mr. Nassus, I was wondering personally, what, what does the O stand for? 
Oh, oh my goodness. You Irishmen certainly do have a way with words. <laughs> now then, Mr. Nassus, I'm calling in regard to an order we received from your wife. She wants a solid gold princess phone. I, I think I should warn you, this instrument could cost $5,000. This strikes me, Mr. Nassus, as being, well, a rather callous disregard for money. I, I said callous disregard for money. Callous. Callous. Ca hello? From Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In, Lily Tomlin, 83 years old today. The man who wanted y'all to tighten up, Archie Bell of Archie Bell and the Drell 78 today. Uh, the last BG standing, Barry Gibbs, 76 years old today. Talk show host Dr. Phil is 72 today. Tybo artist Billy Blank, 67. Uh, Gloria Estefan, 65. From Top Chef, host Padma Lashimi is 52. And she won a primetime Emmy for her role in HBO's Euphoria. Actress singer Zendaya is 26 today. Though some of the people celebrating the first day of September is their birthday. And if this is your birthday. Hi, we're the four freshmen, and we just want to say. Happy birthday to you. And from 73 years ago today, September 1st, 1949, Counter Spy in the case of the gold, cold blooded professor continuing. And that'll be up next here when Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox continues on this Thursday. You ever make a change and then think, why didn't I do this years ago? Well, that's how people feel about switching to MediShare for their health care, especially now with inflation the way it is. People are very happy with the savings. Most families save about $500 a month when they switch. It's a huge help when prices are going up so fast in so many other areas. And MediShare's customer satisfaction rate is double that of health insurance. It's just a different experience, and people really like that. MediShare is an alternative to health insurance. It's a community of Christians who share each other's health care bills, and it's been going strong for over 25 years it really is the gold standard, the most trusted name in healthcare sharing. Find out why people love it. Find out why they rave about the customer service and find out how good it feels to save some money right now. They're super easy to talk to. Here's the number, 833-34-BIBLE. That's 833-34-BIBLE, 833-34-BIBLE. Now on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox, more of the fictionalized version of the FBI, the Counter Spies. Uh, this episode of Counter Spy, originally broadcast 73 years ago today, September 1st, 1949. Pepsi Cola, P E P S I, that's your smartest cola buy. Pepsi Cola presents. Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Harding, Counter Spy, calling Washington. United States Counter Spies, especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. Tonight, more in the case of the cold-blooded professor. Another counter-spy report to the American people. It is doubtful if as many warning flashes ever went out about any criminal as were flashed by the United States counter-spies concerning one Professor Emery Horn. Counter-spy agent with a special flat-handled gun strapped to his chest. He poisoned his housekeeper with poison candy. Finally captured by the counter-spies, Horn arrogantly described these methods of murder in detail. Tried and sentenced to death, 
Professor Horn was held in the safest penitentiary in the country, pending his execution. A few months ago, Professor Horn consulted the prison doctor about his badly infected upper lip. Ah, you're quite a character, Horn. While addressing me, doctor, kindly use my title. Oh, of course. Professor Horn. Only who made you a professor? The only person in the world who's qualified. Myself. Mm-hmm. Four armed guards, and still we're in the prison walls. Within the prison walls, doctor. All right. Hold still now. I don't understand why your upper lip isn't healing. This is a bad infection. I believe the lack of healing is due to hyperproteinemia. Prison food is lacking thiamine and hydrochloride, niacinamide. Oh. Really think you know medicine, don't you? Pardon me if I speak medically over your head, doctor. But then ignorance always irritates me. Ah! There's hair around that infection. All right. I'll have to cover your whole upper lip with adhesive again. How long were you a horse, doctor? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I hurt you. Really? I hear you made six attempts to escape in two months, Horn. Uh, Professor Horn. How news does travel. That's only ten days more till you're transferred to the death house. You have a morbid mind, haven't you? No, no. I was only going to tell you that, uh, ironic as it may be, those ulcers you had for so long are cured. Through no doing of yours, Doctor, I'm sure. Okay. Get going, uh, Professor. Out that way. Bugs. Bugs. Uh, are you awake? Well, at least prison mattresses ain't hide it down, you know. Well put, Bugs. This cell is getting on my nerves, too. You hungry, Bugs? You said it. Here's a sugar cookie I took from the mess. Hey, you could steal the nose off the warden right while he was looking. <laughs> Here, ain't it? Thanks. And uh, put the crumbs in your pocket. Why, why should I go putting cookie crumbs in my pocket? You figure that one out, and I wouldn't have had to plan your escape for you. Who's escaping? Both of us. You one way, I another. Ah. You've noticed I've been bringing back little pieces of lemon from the main dining hall. That's when I knew you was nuts. In my mattress, I have an extra pair of prison pants. Lemons contain acetic acid, and acetic acid bleaches. Uh. I've been bleaching those pants with lemon juice, and now they're as white as any duck pants. Sometimes I think you're a witch. Hey... Where'd you pinch them glasses? They're horn-rimmed spectacles, Bugs. You ever see a little piece of wire lying around in the recreation yard? Sure. Well, there are lots of little pieces like those, and I've been collecting them, winding them together, and bending them into these eye frames and ear pieces. The next step was to unravel threads in the bottom of these trousers and wrap them around the strands of wire to thicken them. Yeah, they're just right. And then I had to give the strands a smooth surface. Paste of flour and water, didn't that? Yeah, but uh, where did you get the uh, the glass in them? Plastic crystals stolen from the wristwatches of other prisoners. And with my new mustache. Hey, now wait a minute! You ain't got no mustache. What do you think is under this adhesive tape on my upper lip? Well, you, you said you you scratched your lip. I did, on purpose with a dirty pin to make sure the infection continued. My excuse to keep the adhesive on. And all the time you were growing a mustache under it. <laughs> oh. Okay, so now you got white pants, a pair of specs, a mustache. But why go to all that trouble just to bust out over the wall? Bugs, ever notice in the corner of our recreation room there's a pile of old building plans... Blueprints of model houses, things like that. Yeah. 
At the right moment, I'll suddenly become a building contractor inspecting the building. I'll walk right out to freedom. And the execution of a plan I have in mind. Holy smoke, Professor. You sure? You sure? Having trouble, Bugs? There's pain in my insides. I, I, I feel like I'm, di- like I'm dying. Bugs, you are dying. That cookie was poison. Help me. Help me. I, I don't want to die. I can't anymore. That poison I made scraps of garbage, bits of toothbrush, handle, and soap is too strong and quick, Bugs. Well, well, find out that you've done this. Oh, no, no. The crumbs I made you put in your pocket, they'll prove you stole the cookie yourself. All right. You dirty rotten. God! God! What's eating you, Professor? Hey, what's with bugs? I'm afraid it's my fault, God. You killed him, Professor? He confessed to me about a murder he'd committed the police never knew about. He was eating a cookie. He must have poisoned it. He must have committed suicide right under my eyes. I'm ducking out into that little ante room off the recreation hall. Cover my place in line so they won't miss me. I need at least three and a half minutes. Now, the bleach trousers. Glasses. He's a tape off. Ah, there's the mustache. Now the blueprints. And into the hall. Fifty yards to freedom. Three minutes left before I miss. Ah, uh, guard. Hey, who are you? I'm the architect's assistant working on alterations to be made in this prison. Yeah? I didn't hear nothing about no alterations. How did you get into the prison? By the entrance on the other side with the rest of our staff. Has uh, this uh, desk you're seated at always been located at this spot? Yeah. Twelve years now. So as I can watch this inside gate. An automatic slide gate controlled from here? No. When the gate's to be opened, I phone the main gate room and they push a button. I'm and listening. Uh, this uh, gate slides open. Will you uh, demonstrate, please? My dear man, I'm in a hurry. I've got to know how these things work. All right, all right. Erickson, gate number two. Open her up. Mm -hmm. Some architect guy. Yeah. Okay. Now she'll open. Well, there's your gate. Fine. Thank you. Hey, you want to see her close again? Uh, Yes, please. can't just walk out of here. I'm connected with a building contractor. You got to sign out with me. Then I got to check it at the main gate room. They check it at your signature when you sign yeah, in. Yes, all right. But uh, first, you've got to show me how this gate works. We're planning alterations. We may have to move this platform that you sit on. Oh. Well, uh, the gate there is controlled by this button here. But the uh, inner gate's controlled from the main gate room. Why is this one easier? Well, they figure anybody who gets past that gate has a right to leave. Oh, we may have to change that. I, I want a closer look at the gate itself. Uh, push the button out, please. Thank you. Hey! You coming back? Uh, no, my work here's all done. You can close the gate. Okay. Uh, 
Helen, Harry Peters. Mr. Harding's not in his office here. I'll try all the departments. Attention, all counters by department. Is Mr. Harding on the main floor? Rush report for you, Mr. Harding. Rush report. <laughs> Attention, all counter-spy departments. This is David Harding. I've just learned that Professor Emery Horn has made an amazing escape from Aldolanda Penitentiary. All trace of him has been lost. All information having even a faint bearing on the professor. Rush to me, top priority. From 73 years ago today, September 1st, 1949, Counter Spy here on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Thank you for listening and visit my webpage, classicradio.stream. That's classicradio.stream for more information about great classic radio programming. Hey, the news of the day coming up from 73 years ago next. Veterinary telemedicine is booming. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori Teller, president of the American Veterinary Medical Association, and I know firsthand that telehealth is a valuable tool to help provide our precious pets with the health care they need and deserve. Here are some situations where telemedicine may be an option for you and your pet, if the veterinarian has seen your pet in person in the past, if you're not sure you need to schedule an in-person visit, if your pet had surgery and needs post-operative follow-up, for skin diseases and rash rechecks, when your veterinarian needs to monitor your pet's chronic problems such as diabetes or allergies, if there are behavioral issues or training challenges, or for hospice care. It's always good to have your session in a quiet place with good lighting. If you're not sure if you should set up a telehealth session, call your veterinarian and they'll let you know. To learn more, check out avma.org telehealth. avma.org telehealth. Thanks for tuning in to Classic Radio Theater on your favorite station. Phillips H. Lords created Counter Spy in the run-up to World War uh, II. In fact, uh, the first episode airing May 18, 1942, ran through November 29, 1957. Fifteen years, and it ran mostly on the Blue Network, ABC, and Mutual, though it did run for a period of time on NBC. The episode today was broadcast September 1st, 1949, in the newspapers of that uh, Thursday, 73 years ago. These were some of the headlines. After voting to raise the minimum wage from 40 cents to 75 cents an hour, the Senate awarded itself a week's vacation last night, only to learn that President Truman has a long, hard reciprocal trade battle in store for it at week's end. The minimum wage bill now goes to a Senate House Conference Committee, which will compromise differences between it and a bill already passed by the House. The Senate decision taken on a voice vote, a partial victory for President Truman, but to get the measure through speedily, his attendants had to abandon attempts to extend the Wage Hour Act to millions of workers now exempt. The typhoon last night smashed homes, paralyzed communications in Tokyo, killed at least 12 and spread destruction along the teeming shores of Tokyo Bay. Police also listed more than 100 injured scores missing. Foreign ministers representing the 12 North Atlantic PAC countries will meet in Washington September 17th to establish the Defense Council called for under the treaty. State Department announced last night this would mark the first move to putting the defense treaty into operation. Yugoslavia accused Russia of using force to place Yugoslavia into an unequal and subdued position. Charge made in an editorial in the communist newspaper Borba, the official voice of the government of Premier Marshal Tito. The editorial was released by the Ministry of the Information in advance of publication. A Russian Air Force officer who deserted last year and offered to fight for the U.S., handed back to Soviet forces in Vienna yesterday. He is Lieutenant Antonoli Barsov, who chose the role of a political refugee and then repented his actions after a lengthy visit in the U.S. 
Major General Harry H. Vaughn swore yesterday he knows nothing about charges the FBI once investigated reports he took money from gambler Frankie Costello and liquor interests for trying to get more grain for whiskey distillers. But the White House military aide did acknowledge the FBI checked rumors he accepted a $10,000 bribe for fixing an income tax complaint against an unknown party. Colonel Cornelius J. Amara, Vaughn's assistant, testified that his boss was completely exonerated. In his second day of testimony before the Senate, five percenters investigation, Vaughn also revealed additional details of how he accepted some $12,000 in Democratic campaign contributions, including one from an L.A. and Washington attorney who sought his help in getting a friend out of jail. Lots of folks have troubles these days, but the possible champion, a fellow who was hauled into a St. Joseph, Missouri court for failure to pay child support. His story, he has two ex-wives, had two children by them, plus one child by his present wife. He also has hay fever so bad he lost his job. Last week, he made just $8.17. Now, each of his former wives got $2.70 of that, leaving him just $2.77 of which $2.35 went for, for hay fever medicine. Case dismissed. Though some of the day's top news stories as reported in the newspapers of Thursday, September 1st, 1949, on your radio Counter Spy, which continues now on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Dave, I was sure we had the professor salted away for good. Ah, he's fantastically clever, Peter. Now he's loose again, a vicious killer. Well, I smell trouble during his trial, Peter. The amazing knowledge of legal tricks he passed on to his defense lawyer almost saved him from the chair. But we're going to get him again if it's the last case I ever handle. I don't think I've ever seen you so angry, Dave. He's killed two state troopers, a woman accomplice, a counter-spy agent, probably a fellow convict. I'm never going to give up on that man. We haven't got one lead on him. Then we'll have to start back at the beginning. Now, we know that for some years, Horn posed as a scientist and lived quietly in a small town in Illinois. Where he killed the counter spy. But, Dave, we find Tooth combed that place at the time. This time, we won't be looking for a clue in the ordinary sense, Peter, but some new clue to his character. We'll have to learn about the man from that old house. From 73 years ago, September 1st, 1949, Counter Spy. The conclusion next on this Thursday, Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox on your favorite radio station. We'll wrap up this week of Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox with an episode of the summer series The Whisperer, starring Carlton Young. From 71 years ago, September 2nd, 1951, the syndicate has ordered Stanley Hayes to be killed. Philip Galt, also the whisperer and the voice of the syndicate, does all he can to keep Stanley Hayes alive. That's coming up on Friday's Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. But right now, the conclusion of Counter Spy from 73 years ago, September 1st, 1949. An eerie, stormy night at the former hideout of Professor Horn in Illinois. Dave, this old house is the best locale for a murder I've seen in years. It was the locale of a murder, Peter. The stain of Agent Cameron's blood. Still there on the carpet. I know. That thunder. It's musty creaky old place. I'd hate to spend a night here alone. I'll control your imagination, Peters. Let's stick to facts. Gladly. Have we got any? Well, I've been here in the study looking through some of these scientific books Horn left behind. Check with me and see if I make sense. Oh, look. A book on physics. Stresses and strains. Uh, take this page. Hmm. Little drawings, sort of doodles in the margins. Scribbled probably while he was thinking over, digesting what he was reading. Sketchy little drawings, aren't they? Unfinished. Almost absent-minded. There are some on almost every page. See? Hmm. 
Now, take another book at random. Here, this one on biochemistry. Nothing eighth grade about these books, is there? You see this page? More drawings of the same kind. It's true of a dozen more of these volumes I've leafed through. And Horn's a doodler. A scientific doodler. Well, Dave, how can we use the fact that it's a characteristic of Horn's to doodle in scientific books? Well, Horn has this scholarly side to him. Now, wouldn't you think that everywhere he goes, he'd want to consult scientific works? But where could he, except in libraries? Exactly. To be more exact, scientific libraries. Right. Now, first, we'll check through all these books. We may find various definite types of doodles that occur over and over. We'll make photostatic copies and send a set to every library in the country. But, Dave... This will mean asking librarians to watch all their readers. They're not trained for that. Well, way. all library books are inspected every so often, Peters. The only tiny clue we need may be hidden this very moment in some library. If we only knew where. And if we only knew where Horn is now. Okay, fella, come on. Thank you, stranger. These desert flats are mighty lonely. Not many cars coming through. I'm glad you came along. Especially since I see you're, uh, just about my size. What? Get out of the car. Oh, I'm stick up, huh? Okay, okay. I guessed very well about your size, mister. Your suit will, um, suit me very well. My suit? I'd rather you took my money. I can always get money when I want it, mister, uh... What's your name? Blake. Jack Special Delivery Blake. The professional football player? What a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Blake. Take off your suit, please. Hey, but the next bullet won't go into the ground, Mr. Blake. It'll go into you. Okay, tough guy. There you are. Jagged, throw it into the car, please. Now the trousers. I'll need the shoes, too, please, Mr. Blake. And, of course, your car. Hey, look, I'll die out in this desert in the sun. True. We must be 20 miles from water. Oh, be a sport, will you? Give me some kind of a chance. A chance? Very well, Mr. Blake. We'll play a little game of my invention. Just remain there beside the road, Mr. Blake. Now, uh, Mr. Blake, you start running. And I'm going to try to run you down with your own car. If I don't get you in one minute or less, you'll be perfectly free. I can't outrun an automobile. Oh, you forget your special delivery, Blake, the best broken field runner in football. Start running, Mr. Blake. Any direction, I'll even give you a little head start. Good, good. Now, here I come. your clothes and your car, would I? Notice it, Peter? What? We've 
I've got the five books Horn used on some eight visits to the San Francisco Scientific Library, but the drawings don't seem the same. It may not be our man. I think it is. The characteristics are here. The little drawings are more definite and finished, as if he had a definite plan. There's a volume on explosives. Yeah. Uh, page 287. Dealing with liquid explosives. The drawings look something like bottles. And a notation, 32 ounces. That well, means 32 ounce bottles, maybe, but why bottles? Well, bottles are an innocent way of carrying liquid explosives, aren't they? Into a bank vault, perhaps. But there are no books here about vaults or electronic protection devices. Funny, well, here's a book on the scientific preservation of works of art. Paintings. No, I hadn't got to that one yet. Here's something, Dave. Huh? Drawings on two different pages. Pages where the locations of famous paintings are listed. It's an unusual interest for Horn. By George. What? Little drawings that might represent explosions. And look where they are. Right next to the listing of four different paintings kept here in San Francisco. Suppose Horn were planning to steal them, preserve them in good condition scientifically, and sell them later in secret. It says here these paintings are insured for $250,000 each. Any one of them would be a good haul. Unless some of these paintings are kept in vaults. They might be. Then that's where his liquid explosives had come in. No doubt there are watchmen to be taken care of. The explosives might serve two purposes, Dan. Kill the watchmen and blow open the vaults, yes. But why pick quart bottles to carry the stuff in? Anyway, we'll check these museums about their storage vaults. See if we can't narrow the field. Hello, Dave. Peters. Of those two museums, only one, the Bayview Art Center, keeps certain artworks and paintings in vaults in the basement. They have a special watchman. The museum's across the street from a large church. Okay. And as to the watchman, Peters, that's your special assignment. Oh. Oh. What's that, sir? You're the uh, night watchman here at the art center? That I am, sir. I didn't see who was sitting there in the shadows. Yeah, uh, me feet are after needing a bit of a rest from walking me post. A lonely job, hmm? That it is. The museum being off by itself this way. And creepy, too, with the cemetery under beside the church. <laughs> I uh, happen to have a couple of bottles of wine here in this package. Could, uh, could I offer you a drink? You could. Only, uh... Might not be wise for you to be uh, tipping a bottle here outdoors. Yeah, there's never nobody to see. Well, I'm sure it'd be better inside. Maybe, uh, maybe down in the cellar where it'd be warm. We'll drink a friendly toast to art. Uh, but if you're bound to give me a drink, I don't mind the first one right here. Very well. Try this Oporto from Spain. It's a dark, heavy wine. There you are. Thank you. And mighty fine it is, too. <laughs> Shall we uh, go inside now? Uh, what kind of wine would that other bottle be now? Oh, I'll show you inside. Let me see. Oh, very well. It's a uh, light white wine. Well, now, that's more like it. Might I read the label? Oh, I must say, well, you can take my word. I'd like to know what it is I'll be drinking. I only want to look at the label. If you insist. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Tip Top Valley Sauton. Bottled by Tip Top Valley Winery Incorporated. Now, I wonder if this bottle would bounce. You've thrown it! You wanted me to drink some wine that blows up, hmm? You fool, you! Huh? You fool! Oh, let go my arm! Uh, take it easy, Horn. We've got... No, no, no! It's okay now, Dave. All right, Horn. You're not blowing open any vaults tonight with explosive wine. Hotting. 
I'd like to know how you caught on. I'll be glad to tell you, and I'll also tell you that we know where you got that suit you have on. You murdered Jack Blake in the desert two weeks ago. I'll be glad to tell you a lot of things, Horn, including this. You're not going to cheat the executioner again. Tonight's counter-spy program originated in New York was directed by William M. Sweets and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer with music by Jesse Crawford. Counterspy is a Phillips H. Lord production for Pepsi-Cola. Enjoy some Pepsi, ice cold tonight. So one might ask, why in the world was there such a uh, kerfuffle uh, over the counterspies not using the name of the FBI? And that was the fact that back in the early 1930s, Phillips H. Lords, the uh, creator of the Counter Spy, uh, had a radio program called G-Men. And it was a very loud and raucous show. And uh, the, the, uh, the head of the FBI, J. Edgar Hoover, thought it was too loud, it was too noisy, it was too shoot 'em up And uh, so uh, Phillips H. Lords ended G-Men, and changed the show to what we now know as Gangbusters, which in and of itself was a very loud and raucous show. And uh, then later on, he created his own uh, agency, the Counter Spies. That's why you have this show. It ran for 15 years, mainly over uh, ABC and Mutual, did run a short period on NBC. This episode from September 1st, 1949, here on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Uh, if you miss a day of this show, you do not have to miss a single episode. They're all available at my webpage, classicradio.stream. That's classicradio.stream. There you can stream our shows on demand. You can learn more about classic radio collecting. Uh, you can build a classic radio collection of your own using some of our suggestions. You can find our podcast links and our social media links. You can contact me there, and you can, of course, buy your buy me a coffee. Now, you don't have it. I don't drink coffee, but what I do with that buy me a coffee money is I use that to acquire some new uh, collections of shows that we have not had before. And most recently, we acquired Casey Crime Photographer, and that will be coming up in the near future. Thank this station, would you? Support the advertisers. Have a great Thursday and tell your friends the great radio shows are right here at this spot on the dial. Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox on your favorite station.